What's up my friends, welcome back. In this video we're gonna talk about our tank controller. First, let's look at the circuit schematics that we are about to do. So, we are gonna take two joysticks from an old controller. We are gonna connect power and ground from the Arduino to those joystick potentiometers and connect each output to an analog input from the Arduino. Then, we connect all the NRF24 pins as shown in this table and we are done. We connect the Arduino to an FTDI module and upload the code. Easy, right? Just remember, the NRF24 module works at a 3.3 voltage and needs an external voltage regulator because it uses a lot of current. So add that between the main power and the module. Okay, let's take those joysticks out from the controller. This is the controller I bought from a second-hand store. It's pretty good for this project, but if you want to control a drone for example, you will need a much more joystick precision. Then you should buy an RC controller with high-quality joystick like this one and turn it into an Arduino radio controller like I did. I will now show you what's inside this one. So we have the main 9 volt supply that goes directly to the switch, the amplified NRF module with a range up to 1 km, the two joystick outputs, the Arduino Nano with an USB connection, now there is the voltage regulator that supplies the radio module and we are done. Since this case is big enough I left all the components inside, but in today's project we'll have to build our own case since the control that I have is too small. Let's open our joystick. We won't use this 2 battery holder, but I'll keep it. I'm gonna remove this buttons PCB because all I need for now are the joysticks. Here is the joystick PCB, let's get it out. Here you go, two nice joysticks with 4 potentiometers and an on and off switch. What we need to do now is cut the PCB connection between the potentiometers so we could solder our connection after that without getting the joystick out of the PCB. Using a cutter I make a small cut between each pin and after that I check if there is still a connection with my multimeter. If there is a beep that means that I should cut a little more. Now that each pin is separated we can start making our connections. We first solder the foreground using the blue wire and the VCC using the orange wire. You could use the PCB tracks to make your job easier like I did in this case. Remember that the middle pin will be our analog pin that will go to the Arduino. We solder now the four analog outputs with the green wire. All we need to do now is to solder two more wires that will connect the ground and the 5 volts VCC. I want to use the on off button that this PCB has so I will solder two more wires that will go between the button and the battery so when the button is switched on it will power up the entire system. I've used the PCB tracks that weren't connected to make the circuit more simple and use less wires. I recommend you do the same but always check if there is connection between the tracks you use and your pins. We screw the joystick PCB to a wood plate passing the wires through some holes and we are done. For the NRF module I'd use an 8 hole connector like this one. We want to connect everything to the Arduino so I've made this small PCB with some female pins so I can get the Arduino in and out and not solder it if we want to use it in other projects. The Arduino will go in the middle pins and we will connect all our wires around it. We have to solder each female pin to the Arduino pin under the PCB like this. Using double tape we stick the small PCB to the wood plate. We glue the 3.3 voltage regulator as well. We drill a hole for the NRF module in the upper corner. Then we connect one battery pin to the on off button and the other one to the 3.3 voltage regulator and the input voltage of the Arduino. In this way when we switch the button we will have 9 volts to the voltage regulator and the Arduino input as well. Remember that the Arduino has its own voltage regulator but it isn't that powerful. 
Next, we connect the ground and the 5 volts of the joysticks to the ground and VCC of the Arduino. Now we start connecting the analog inputs to the Arduino 0, 1, 2 and 3 input pins. We put the NREF module in place and make all the connection as shown in the table before. Everything is ready to go. All we need to do is screw a back wood plate and maybe print a 3D case, but not now. So finally, we finished our Arduino controller. All we need to do is upload the code and test it. To do that, we first have to solder our Arduino Pro Mini pins to fit into our controller. We check that it fits ok and using an FTDA module we will upload the code. You could solder some pins from the FTDA connection, but in my case I've just plugged the FTDA pins into the Arduino and click upload. Before uploading, let's take a look at the main transmitter code. First, we include the spy by wire and the NRF24 library. You can download the NRF library in the link below. Next, we will create a constant that will carry our connection address. The receiver should carry the same address, otherwise the connection won't work. Here we define the digital CE and CSN pins of our radio module. We have to create our structure that we are going to send. In our case, we will send 4 bytes, each one will carry the information of one of our 4 analog inputs. Remember that the maximum channels this device could send is 32, which is a lot. We will define our left vertical movement as the throttle and the horizontal one as the yaw. We do the same for the right joystick giving the name speech and roll. Now that we have our structure, we will go to the next part. In this void, we give the start values of each byte. If the connection is lost, these values will take place and the receiver will receive these numbers. Since the joystick will be in the middle position, the middle values between 0 and 255, which is the range of the analog right of the Arduino, will be 127. Let's jump to the final part of the code. We can see that we are reading the analog inputs 0, 1, 2 and 3. In order to fine calibrate these values, we are using the function map joystick values. Let's say that your potentiometer is in the middle position and the analog grid should be exactly 512 which is the middle way between 0 and 1024 but instead of that value you read 500. By changing these numbers you will be able to fine tune your analog grid to your desired values. If your potentiometer is reversed and instead of reading from 0 to 1024 it reads from 1024 to 0 you just change this value from true to false and the values will be reversed. So, in our void loop, we put our analog read values into our structure and write that structure using the radio write function. In the void setup, we set the clock and data rate and we will open the radio connection. We are ready to send the data. Let's upload this code and give it a small test. Remember to select your COM and the Arduino Nano as a board. I will connect an Arduino Uno to another NRF module that will serial print all that it receives in order to see if we have a good connection or not. I have uploaded the transmitter code. Now I plug the 9V battery and check that everything is going well. I check the 33 voltage at the voltage regulator output. Everything seems ok. Make the NRF connection to your Arduino Uno and upload the receiver test code that you can download in the link below. I have connected my Arduino Uno to the NRF receiver module. Let's see the results. We can see that we received the potentiometer's values between 0 and 225. Our work is done! See you guys in the next video where I will be building the tank receiver and program it to do some cool stuff!